Hello everyone, it is me Vegeta T23 and welcome back to my new what if. Today we're talking about what if Tarbo went to Earth with Goku. Before I start I'd like to mention that I created a Discord server for you to join. The link is in the description of this video so if you'd like to join in and talk to me and the rest of my fans, it's there. I'd also like to mention that I created an Instagram so you can survey my very uninteresting life. I mainly post Osu stuff. Now back to the video. In the last part, we discussed the battle with the androids and Goku's heart virus. Androids 16, 17, and 18 emerge and start tearing Earth apart a little until Cell arrives and starts haunting them, absorbing 17, while the squad transferred now sick Goku to Jiro's lab, thinking they won't search for him there. During Vegeta's and Tarbo's fight with Cell, they knew they don't stand a chance. However, Goku saved them at the very last second. After they agreed to get a new guardian and got Dende to Earth, they got into the time chamber and trained. While Goku and Gohan were training, Vegeta got his ass dropped. Once Goku and Gohan finished their training all the way, they got rid of Cell. With the recap out of the way, let's continue the what if. It's been about 7 years after Cell and Gohan is now an adult, as well as Trunks. Goku, Vegeta, Tarbo and the rest of the Saiyans are just hanging out at Capsule Corp most of the time, either training or just screwing around. Videl keeps on pursuing Gohan, eventually getting him to spit out the energy part of it. Videl wants to learn about it and so the first bond between the two is set in place. Back to Gohan, Videl asks Gohan to meet somewhere to teach him that energy thing and Gohan reluctantly agrees. All of a sudden, the rest of the squad get the message about the tournament and they decide to participate. So they go and do some training for the tournament. Meanwhile, a few days later, Videl arrives at Gohan's residence through the school directory, being tired of waiting for the lessons and Gohan has no other choice but the teacher. Goten also asks to join and Gohan takes him along as well, much the displeasure of Videl's. Videl mentions that if he doesn't want it to be exposed, he needs to join the tournament, and Gohan agrees, being presented no other choice. After Videl gets a basic idea of key control and a bit of training, the two spar and Gohan accidentally flies back to dodge an attack. Goten doesn't know how to fly and he attempts to ask how to do it, but is cut off by Videl, of course. Videl asks how did he jump back so smoothly now needing to show her the flying technique as well. Videl, now understanding the full extent of energy, then pursues him to teach her fly as well and he does. Goten, still not knowing how to fly, asks of Gohan to teach him too. Now having two students in his tow, he decides to train them both. Once he teaches them, Videl goes to train on her own, while Goten and Gohan train on their own. 25 days later, they all go to the tournament grounds. However, two new and unknown people meet up with them and just stand there, calmly looking at our squad while Vegeta and others glance at them from time to time nervously. The children's division goes smoothly and it's time for the big boys. Since pretty much everything is similar to canon, I'll go over the important parts. Piccolo takes on who we later find out is Shin. He fights him and wins easily even though he was weirded out by Shin's mere presence and started questioning himself as to what he actually is. So they thought of him as a big deal. When it came to time for Kibito to fight Gohan, even Shin himself isn't sure if he's gonna be able to hold him. He somehow manages to hold him as Popo Ichinyamu were stealing his energy. So Popo Ichinyamu then fly off, and Vegeta also follows, as well as Gohan, Goku, Tarbo, Videl, Raditz, Shin, and Kibito. They all assemble in one squad and talk about Majin Buu and how, if he's released, he will terrorize the whole planet. Of course, no one took it seriously. When they do arrive, they can see Shin and Kibito shook, one small boy and one demon creature standing right in front of them. Vegeta asks who does he have to take down and Shin monotonally and in shock to waste them all. Vegeta gets out of the opening, but Trunks goes Super Saiyan 2 and goes at them, wasting the demon first then Bobbity. After those terrifying few minutes, Raditz comes out of the lighting he created with bulging veins, eyeliner, and an M on his forehead. Vegeta figured that Bobbity made Raditz one of his goons and that he is now evil. Raditz blames Vegeta for being weak or whatever and demands a fight. Vegeta asks of Goku to fight his brother right when he finishes Yakon as Vegeta dies in the depths of ship. 
However, he feels something odd, which then turns into an earthquake. Vegeta is then kicked out of the ship into the sky, followed by a pink blob. Vegeta has never seen a power this huge before, thinking this might actually be Majin Buu. Shin and the others who got out watch in horror as they see Vegeta and Majin Buu go face to face. Goku is still fighting Raditz, regardless of the circumstances. Both Goku and Raditz go Super Saiyan 2 and escape to the outskirts to fight it out. Vegeta is surprised that Buu is so strong. Buu tries to shoot a Ki Blast, but Tarbo comes in and reflects it. Tarbo then proceeds to try to reason with Buu. Buu simply doesn't give a shit and blasts him to the ground and leaves the area. The rest try to follow, but Buu is just way too fast for them. From here, the events go pretty much the same. Buu meets Satan B, and Buu gets triggered. Then Buu is suddenly on the ground, screaming out bloody murder until finally he expelled evil from within. Satan got confused as to which Buu is which, and the two Boos battle it out, and to say they're going at it is an understatement. Two Boos then have a wave battle. The evil one wins, of course, and becomes Super Boo. Goku mentioned how he might have found a way beyond the Super Saiyan 2 transformation, and he can really use a sparring partner this time. And he takes Vegeta and goes to the now improved time chamber to train there for Boo. Gohan also finished with the Supreme Kai and went to the battlefield, also carrying two earrings. He met up with his father, Vegeta, and Tarbo. Gave Goku Pataras and told him what they're for. Gives them to Vegeta. The now powered up warriors are ready to rumble. Gohan was told to go first, sensing the immense power coming from him, higher than theirs. So they thought he might have a chance. Everything goes really well until Goku is absorbed out of nowhere. Gohan is now in one heck of a pickle as Bukarat has overpowered Gohan so much that he too gets absorbed. Tarbo and Vegeta both turn Super Saiyan 2. Vegeta tried plotting to go Super Saiyan 3 and tried to take down Super Buu, but as he transforms, he too realizes what might happen. Tarbo then steps in, letting his brother escape to seek more power in the time chamber. Vegeta, however reluctant, gives a Putara to his brother. Vegeta tells Tarbo what he's been told about fusion, minus the misunderstanding of permanent fusion. With that, the two fuse into Tarb Vegeta. Despite the lack of power in Tarbo, it was backed up by the Super Saiyan 3, Vegeta, who was in the form prior to the fusion. Having that combined with the power of fusion, the two were unstoppable. Buhan has now adjusted to his new body and power. With that, the two begin fighting, and of course it's clear that Tarb Vegeta is dominating Buu like a pest despite Boo having two new power-ups. Getting right into every trap Boo's got for the newborn fusion, he's always getting out of it. He knows that they got to save their friends, who are within Boo. So they plot a plan, much like Vegito did in canon, and enter Boo's body. Once inside, they didn't unfuse right away, rather they got to the Gohan, Goku, and the rest who got absorbed, and released them from their respective cocoons. Tarbjita had just enough time to escape Boo's body and blast Boo away from good. So with that all set and everyone happy for once, they return to their daily routines, with Boo completely gone. However, they don't know what might be coming for them in the future, and that something might pose a threat to the whole earth. And with that, we're leaving things be for now, thank you for watching. If you think I'm a bad driver, then click dislike, but if you liked the video, hit that like button. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below, and as always, peace out.